Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of A Definitive Discussion Rebooted. It's my talk show podcast where I bring on phenomenal individuals from all over the place across the different corners of the internet, the gaming industry, and we talk about a bunch of stuff. If you guys can, let me know in the comments section if you guys have been enjoying all the content. Send me any suggestions of who you guys want to see on the show and what topics you want us to discuss. Again, there's a lot of content now for you guys to enjoy, but today I have Anthony Florida, who is also known as DadBot plays on twitch he's the host of the dad's beards and nerds podcast and he just loves video games as much as i do so anthony what's good uh, how's it going this is the second time we're trying to record this too so. yeah yeah it's well first off it's going great thank you for asking second we're gonna hope that round two goes a lot better than round one uh once again you know i was having all those issues with my uh with my internet via comcast it's just the worst in my area so comcast i'm hoping sucks. today we got it fixed and i'm just ready to sit here chat with you and talk about hot topics yeah, pretty much, man. Again, it's Comcast. Everybody hates Comcast. Like, yeah, I, I've, I've complained about Comcast so many times on this channel. It's been utterly ridiculous. But anyway, <laughs> that aside, okay, the reason why I brought you on is because, again, you know a lot about Twitch. You've streamed a lot. Again, you're a host of your podcast. And yes. you, do, you talk a whole bunch of stuff, you know, related to video games. But I more wanted to dive a little bit more into Twitch streaming because look, even though I'm more YouTube than I am Twitch, I have streamed a bunch of times, you know, for various mm -hmm. different reasons and such. But we obviously have very different experiences and everybody has their own experiences with twitch for you especially now the way things are going on now with what's happening in the world and stuff how has twitch streaming been for you i mean it's just been better it's been good it's been okay twitch streaming has been good um so i've actually had to i've had to back it up just a little bit due to comcast just being so shoddy um i mean i'll get into a stream and it'll drop two to three times within a two hour time frame and it kind of just kills that momentum but right now i would say twitch streaming right now for anybody who wants to stream is as good as it's going to get but it's also bad at the same time because there are so many people on the site streaming at any given time especially now during quarantine for the whole u.s that it's this kind of double-edged sword where there's so much content on so if you're looking for great gone to content this is the perfect time to do it but if you're looking to like start your channel now you know it's going to be a little bit rough because there's so much content but I would say overall, it's a good thing. Like it's always a double-edged sword when you have a lot of people on the platform, especially with something like Twitch, where you've just got, you know, the average person who just wants to watch a stream. They've got so many options, and you know, granted, they're probably seeing someone from Twitter or someone they know streaming. But from there, you're finding other options and finding other options. You know, it's like a skill tree in an RPG. It just branches, and then it gets to a point where it's like, well, shit, which way do I go? How do I want to build this? And now you've got so many people you're watching that. You're really not going to give other, you know, time to other streamers, and you kind of focus it on a couple it's different funny. ones. So it's funny that you mentioned that because, again, for someone like me, where when I was streaming, one of the things I used to struggle with because I used to stream a lot almost every day at some point, and I was just not getting viewers. And and now in this day and age, just even on YouTube, it's very hard to get noticed or at least to get yourself out there. I mean, even from my own personal experience, I do a lot, probably a lot more than the average person when it comes to like sharing my content or just doing a sheer amount of content just to put out there. And it could still be difficult and annoying and very frustrating to get out. Out there so for people just to see you to acknowledge you or even just again to follow your stuff i mean was that something that you struggled with because i still think like it's just as hard if not harder now because things are so saturated oh yeah and especially with like when it comes to throwing out like a going live uh tweet because i mean i primarily focus uh on twitter when it comes to you know announcing the stream and stuff like yeah. that it's just there are so many people throwing out going live tweets that you just kind of you you throw a blind eye to it because you see it so many times some people even it's also, like I, live, I want to also mention that some people besides twitter they also sometimes go on instagram and they do that and they also even yeah. put up like a short like 30 or 20 second clip on their youtube channel for their subs to let them know that they're streaming live i've seen that done a bunch of times yeah it's wild too because what might what will work one week won't work the next there's so much like like it's so spontaneous and so random that I can't it's dial like the it down. It's like constantly moving. Like the goalposts are yes. just constantly changing. 100%. So it becomes a scene where even when you do go live, uh, you know, like first off, will your followers on Twitter see them? You know, how many people do they follow? Is it something where am I posting while 500 other people post? So it's just getting drowned out. So it's just one of those scenes where you've got to find out that, that weird rhythm or be posting really funny stuff or really interesting stuff in between like i try to post a lot of weird stuff and i'm just a weird guy as it is anyways i'm on my twitter so people when they see a tweet they're like oh what's anthony or what's dad bob place tweeting today and if it is a going live they're like oh he's just going live but they at least engaged with it and looked at it 
You know, it's funny too, because I always felt like that type of stuff, especially with Twitter specifically, always worked more in favor for those that already had like a large audience. Like obviously when you look at some of these larger creators, even ones that are more primarily on YouTube, like Angry Joe, or if you look at like Markiplier or something, because they have such large audiences, there's going to be like a greater amount of people that are going to see that whenever they say like, oh, I'm going live right now. So come hang out with me this evening and stuff. I feel like they're going to obviously get more traction with that. But when you're starting off or like when you have a significantly smaller following or smaller uh, fan base of people that just follow your stuff i mean that could sound like you're just constantly going up a steep hill and like not making any progress whatsoever at least from my own experience or even from what people have told me in their own experiences definitely and another thing is, is you don't want to just be throwing out going live you know tweets going live um you know stuff on instagram because then curate. people are just like curate. yeah yeah because then people are like oh another going live that's all he ever posts so it becomes this weird like game <laughs> of like what can i post in between so people aren't getting bored with my going live my going live tweets which generally in the past i used to like to, to do really like silly videos and stuff when i went live and maybe that helped you know maybe it's something i should go back to and and, and kind of re-examine or at least like test quick the waters clips with or again. something like quick clips yeah yeah they would, they would usually just be like really weird and like i'd be holding my dog or I, I i would be have some weird song in the background or just do something weird i don't generally do that but you know twitter's hot it's hard in me it's maybe colder inside <laughs> yeah, right twitter, twitter does that social media does that to people which yeah. we'll, get, we'll talk more about that stuff later because me and you're going to talk about some fun stuff on <laughs> ex mode but i do want to also get a little bit more into just like you know blending all these different platforms together because obviously even though you're more on Twitch, you also do dabble a little bit on YouTube. You also do dabble with all the other social media platforms we mentioned, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know, yeah. some people, even myself, uses LinkedIn. I still don't understand why people just neglect LinkedIn. Like, I know people that know of it and they just choose not to mess with it. But then there are others that are just like, whatever, like, I don't care about it. And I feel like, you know, if you're not using all your platforms or using all your tools in some way, you're still not going to get further ahead, at least to the point that you want to. I mean, do you feel so yeah. similar? Yeah, definitely. I but then then you get run into the issue where I was running into where it's like it's so much posting where I go live and now I've got to post on four other social like four other spots That's that I'm going live in it. Yeah, and it turns into this ten minute you know slog of just I'm going live, I'm going live, I'm going live, I'm going live, and it does get to a point where I get a little lazy with it. So I mean, I in in reality, I probably should be utilizing those better. But I do feel like a lot of my viewers specifically come from Twitter, as opposed from any other social media site. I mean, Facebook, it's really friends and family. So like my grandma's like, Oh, there goes Anthony, you know, tweet, you know, going live again on, on, on his Twitter page. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, like, I feel like Instagram, for the people that I have on, there don't don't really care about that. But Twitter, I feel is the spot where where I can get the most engagement for people who want to see people streaming. I feel you. I, I can understand that. And again, you got to work with and at least go more with whatever's working at the moment. I feel like Definitely. you got to capitalize on that. Here's something more interesting that I think we should dive into. And maybe you could speak a little bit better to this than me because, again, I'm more on YouTube than I am on Twitch. What is it like when it comes to collaborating or just like working together with other creators or other streamers? Because even on YouTube, it could be very difficult. It could be a real pain in the ass, for lack of a better phrase, when it comes to yeah. trying to find other people to collab with or at least trying to find things that work or even just looking for people that might be interested interested or at least give you the time of day i think that is really frustrating and it can be very difficult when you're trying to get ahead even though you're doing your own stuff but everybody obviously needs a little bit of help at some point <clears throat> Uh, so I feel like collaborating on Twitch is a, is a bit easier than YouTube. I feel like the collaborations on YouTube uh, uh, can be a, a little harder. Now, granted, I'm not uh, like too heavy in the YouTube space. I'm just kind of dabbling here and there. But I, I've done a little more on YouTube than I have uh, like for my podcast and I have really with my own stuff. Although I do have my own Dab Bob Plays page and I would love to post on there. Um, it's the thought of going to another platform does. It's just kind of like, oh, man, I got to annoy. Yeah, I got to rebuild. But if I could find somebody to collab with on there, that'd be awesome. But I feel like it's easier to collab on YouTube when you're both in the same city and you can kind of physically get together. As opposed with Twitch, it's so, you know, online based and such an internet friends type of thing to where the collaborations get a lot easier and a lot smoother because, oh, I have a camera. Well, I have a camera too. I've got a good mic. So do I. Well, let's let's collab. You know, let's let's play Overwatch together. And during the streams, we'll make sure to announce that we're playing together and, and check out our dual streams here. So... I've always found that Twitch is, seems to be the easier platform for me anyways to collab with people. It's funny that you say that because the way that I tried to do it one time with my own Twitch stream, like, again, however you might feel about this person or whatever else, even people that are listening to this now, I'm just telling a story. Okay, walk with me mm -hmm. for a second, right? So 
I, a while back, I tried to do a co-stream or at least a collaboration stream with Darkside Phil. For D, they call me DSP on Twitter and stuff. Everybody knows who he is. So one of the yeah. things that got frustrating with that and got really annoying was that while I was doing my stream and while I thought we had the understanding that we were going to play together and we were going to share the audience and the viewers and stuff, on my stream, I was like, okay, I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you guys want to know the perspective, go check out Phil's stream. Let him know what, what's going on and all that stuff. I was doing that, but at the same time, he wasn't doing that for me. Like he hardly ever did that, which, you know, for me, you know, that obviously kills the whole point of like having a collaboration where you're just kind of like you know sharing the audiences or try to push the audiences like ping pong between both perspectives because at the time we were doing stuff like smash brothers we were doing stuff like ultra street fighter 2 on switch you know competitive games where we could play yeah. with the audience and stuff or tag team against the audience and for me that made it very difficult because not only did i get not get anything out of it at the time i was i think at that point i was only streaming to like maybe two viewers at one point, I was like, well, how the hell has he got like 200 people watching his stuff? And it's like, I'm not getting anybody over here. It's like, it defeated the whole purpose. <laughs> Did you ever run into like a frustrating thing like that or something similar? Maybe not the exact thing in some way when you were trying to do a collaboration on Twitch? Yeah, you know, um, so I, I, I collabed one time with my buddy Snowbike Mike, a really good friend of mine, a really awesome person, great stream. T check him out, twitch.tv slash Snowbike Mike. Um, we did a dual stream where we both built Gundams and chatted with each other on Discord. And, uh, you know, it was all mainly on his side. And I had some people come over, but I don't really think that goes against the other streamer. I just think that's that streamer's audience. Now, it's kind of like when you raid someone, uh, a lot of times you don't get a whole lot from a raid from someone. Like I've had a raid come in with 70 people and maybe got like four followers out of it and people stayed for like five minutes. It's very much, people like what they like and, and it's always that great to true. do yeah, to, to collab with another streamer. But when you're collabing with them, it doesn't mean that their audience is going to connect with you the same way that they connect with that person. So it's it's kind of becomes this, you 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 want, it's like an interview. You know, you're in there, you want to get, you know, 10 seconds of you just kind of giving them what you are. Like, hey, what's everybody? You know, like when they come in, I go, I'm Dad Bob Plays. I like to be loud. You're, you know, you're watching that 2006 Reactor Live Champion. And, you know, we're just here for some good gameplay. Thank you for stopping by. And if you want to stay cool, if not, have a good night. But Twitch is very much, if you are getting a raid from someone whose following is so hardcore, they may give you a, a courtesy follow, but the odds of them staying with you are very slim. And it's just, it's not, you know, a slight against any other streamer. It's just kind of the way that, that viewers who watch the people they want to watch, it's just kind of the way it goes. And there's really no getting around that. Like, like the way I see it is a lot of people who view streams, they've got maybe four people tops who they cycle through. And two of those are people that they main all the time. And the other two they'll go to, you know, here and there. But, you know, I, I try not to take those things kind of personal because I know an audience wants what the audience wants. And if it's not me, it's not me. But if I can collab with people and kind of branch myself out and at least give an introduction to, to new people, then cool. It is what it is. And I'm very appreciative for it. That's very true. But I think also the other question that some people listening to this might have is then, okay, then if that's the case and it's true, the audience is going to go and do whatever it's going to do. It's like one of those things that nobody has control over. But then what's the point of a collab then? Like for me, like, right, when I do a collab, usually when it comes to like stuff like this, like when we're talking on a podcast, to me, that's not really a collab. It's just, again, you two talking or somebody just like, you know, giving you the time of day to actually talk and stuff. To me, a collab is when like both play, both parties or both entities are like putting in some type of work to make one product for the audience as a well whole for both yeah. audiences like that like in the case of like you know collabs with like reviews on youtube which uh, for me would be like the easiest comparison to it like if two reviewers come together to review a game or the two two creators come t together to do some sort of vlog or something to me that's a collab like that yeah what i see mostly on twitch and again just from my own perspective because you're you would be a little bit different because you spent more time with the platform is that mm -hmm. if both people are just like streaming on their own audiences then like that it's not really a collab because then you're still just streaming to your own audience like that but this other person or this other entity is like tangential to you like at what point when does when does it become a collab or how can it actually become a collab rather than just being like you know within close proximity to each other so i think the best way like especially for smaller streamers and affiliates i want to say you can dual stream but you have to be a um you have to be a partner so you would have to you'd have to do it with another partner in order to get that dual stream status that official twitch dual stream status yeah. so the easiest way to for like two affiliates to hop on and let's say like so like mike's like hey i, I want to play some games with you you know like let's let's bring our stuff together and do this would be there there are certain sites where you can link uh both twitch streams into one browser and then both of you will get a view i mean it counts as a separate view for both of you but i i, I would imagine that would be the best way to ensure that you know everyone's getting proper viewage and the collab is worth it now granted again each other's audience has to click that link in order to watch True. it. So their, their audience might be like, 
well, I don't really want to do that because then I have to hear two voices at the same time, and that's annoying. So, so once again, it comes down to does one particular streamer's audience within this uh, collab stream want to do that? Yeah, and then uh, that's ultimately what it comes to. But I 100% get what you're saying. It's like it comes to a point too. Like, what's the point of me collabing with anybody, especially if I know probably 90% know that their viewers won't even come to mind. Like you, and I'll like you feel all... like you're not going to get anything out of it. Cause I know there's yeah. people out there that do feel like that. I'm not saying myself or even you, but like just yeah. people in general, like, okay, like, like that creator that's just starting on the platform or has been on the platform for a while, <laughs> Twitch or YouTube, whatever like that. And they're trying to at least do something like they're putting in work and they're doing something like this. And then that happens to them. They, it, probably more than likely makes it feel like okay well i feel like i just wasted like what three four hours of my time trying yeah. to do something that i didn't get anything out of it i feel like with twitch if you're going to come in and you're going to twitch stream uh you need to be in the in a marathon mentality unless like you have a tweet or a tiktok blow up you it, it's a marathon it's not a sprint and if you do have a tweet blow up you go viral and you're able to bring people to you that way fucking kudos that to you and i applaud you yeah exactly exactly but that's really the only way to really get that that insanely large instant growth other than that especially with like like with, with you know to, to go back to the collaboration theme the way i always saw that was um if i'm collaborating with another streamer and we're playing games together um what I'm coming into this is to play games with them. I'm playing games with a friend and everything that comes after that is bonus, you know? And do I want people to come over? Yes. Uh, will it happen? Probably not. But if I don't put myself in the mentality of this is going to blow me up, then I, I'm not disappointed as if, as opposed to coming in with preconceived notions. So that's the way I try to look at it. I don't really get to uh, collab with, with very many other streamers. I, I would love to. Like if anybody hit me up and they wanted to collab, I would I would definitely say, yeah, let's do it. Let's pick a day. Let's do it. But a little bit, not it's not on people don't really ask me, but it is on with my work schedule. I work grave shifts. So, you know, on the days that I work, I don't stream because I, I generally work start work at like 10 p.m. to 1030. And I am more of a nighttime streamer. So what I'd have to start at like 7, I would lose sleep time. for it. <laughs> that that yeah, late, yeah, yeah. late midnight oil type of burning. It, exactly. Which I, to be honest, that's when I prefer to stream because I have kids as well. So I got to get the kids to bed. But now they're getting to an age to where, you know, they won't come in and bother me. And if they do, they can say hi to chat. They're not loud. But, you know, I now, digress. You know, I want to ask you something about that because, granted, I know nothing about that because I don't have kids. Like, does that yeah. get worrisome for you? Because, like, as a parent, like, I would assume, again, not knowing, not having kids, as a parent, like, when you want to give you that type of exposure of your kids to the internet or the internet have that type of exposure to, like, your family, I've always, like, felt like at some point I would put, like, a hard guard on that. And I see, like, a lot of other people, like, when they have kids and stuff, like, they're more comfortable with this. So it's like, yeah. at least at this point in my life, I can't see myself doing it. Is that, was that a worry for you at some point? Um, If my children, if we made a YouTube channel for my children in particular, I, I would be weirded out by, like, random comments on there. But when it comes to my stream, the kids are very rarely in it. And if they are up and I'm streaming, like, I'll say, hey, come over, say hi to the stream. I had, I have had one time where my oldest came out of the shower and he, like, went to go jump and stream, but I had to, like, uh, like, like, stiff arm him. <laughs> oh, I was like, no, no, you're naked. You're going to get me in trouble. Oh, you see, I freak out. Yeah, I freak out. Yeah, I can't no have a stream. No stream. I can't have a shirtless point. child on stream. You got to do. I, I said, go put on a shirt and then come back and you can say hi. Oh, my God. I would flip out. I would honestly. Flip oh, out. man. You see, well, it was really type of stuff. It was so quick. It was so, it was like so quick. And I was like, no. And he's like, and he got mad. I go, go put on a shirt. Go put on a shirt. You're going to get me in trouble. So he puts on a shirt. He comes back. I go, okay, now I say hi to stream. Oh man, you're a better man than me in that regard because I, I <laughs> stream would be shut down that day, like for, for like a day, at yeah. least a day. But you know, oh, I, I, I also funny. want to ask you this too because I think this is very important as well for a lot of people outside of all the stuff that we've said at this point. Everything being said, like what is the most intimidating thing about streaming on Twitch? Because a lot of people will point to the growth, you know, the, the need to get people to watch your stuff. Uh, people would also say the money. You know, because of, you know, affiliate status, partner <clears throat> status, people can make money on Twitch now by doing stuff like this. But it, there's a million other things you could point to. Like for you, like, what is it or what was it at some point? I think the most intimidating thing for me, and it, it still persists, is um, streaming to zero to like two of viewers. Um, yeah. I'm very much someone I, I need people in my chat. Now, whether you want to sub cheer donate cool but i don't care about that i need people in my chat talking and reacting to what i'm doing it, the, the way i see twitch is, is it's entertainment and i'm here to entertain you and when no one's in chat it's just so boring and i try to throw out like like katie bench is really good about it too and i got this from her but uh, you know randomly every like 30 seconds to a minute just like say something random or like start singing a song and do something random because 
even with very little viewers to no viewers, it still keeps me kind of in that mode yeah. as opposed to going into this lull and I'm dull and now I'm in, ugh, I have no, no viewers mode. So that's the most intimidating for me is when you, you're an hour in and you've had zero to two viewers and you're just kind of like, like, oh my God, like I need people in here. What am I doing wrong? See, I and then you kind of get in your head. I feel that same thing, especially that was one of the reasons why I kind of stepped away from streaming so much because I was doing that a lot, like streaming a lot, and I was getting, either getting no viewers or getting very little viewers and nobody would talk. Mm -hmm. And the guys, I, I get more animated when I'm able to interact with the chat. Like not too long ago, I was able to do a stream for the, what is it, for I Need Diverse Games where I was doing a, a panel lecture, a digital panel on superhero games. And as soon as people started coming in at the start of the stream, I was able to like really kind of like do what I do best and have a yeah. lot of fun with it. And I feel like it could probably be the same thing for you and a lot of other people is like you know when you see people actually there or at least you know doing something it kind of motivates you not only to do more but also i think it also helps out with a lot of people that are just jumping in there for like a split second and they see other people chatting i think that's also a big factor to it all oh definitely yeah when i go into a chat or and when i go into a stream and people are going like chatting and going wild i yeah i want to chat as well but it, you know it, it comes down to like when you know when people study and they rehearse and they learn lines for a play like are, if that playhouse is packed, you're going to get a very much different play, a more vibrant. You're going to get a more realer experience from it as opposed to if there's two people in there watching someone do Macbeth. True. You very know, true. so so I, I would say that's the most, you know, Twitch is large and I know like stuff will come in time, but the most intimidating thing to me is is finding that I'm getting into this weird dullness because there are no viewers and I don't want to be that streamer. I'm very high energy. I want to be very loud. I, I could probably be super annoying at times, but that's the kind of like, that's the kind of stream I want to give to you. Like I'm, I'm very like that in real life. The person I am on stream is very much the person I am in real life as well. And like my poor wife gets it all the time. Like, is he like that off the of stream too? And she's just like, yes, it's exhausting. <laughs> uh, but th there you go. I think that's a very good. And that's something I've heard a lot over time. Like that Twitch is one of the more authentic type of like strip platforms, you know, to, to kind of blow up on or be a part of because it's all live. And it's like, again, you got to be genuine in some way, which is very cool overall. I think it's very interesting. But Anthony, thank you so much for chatting with me on this episode of the show. Talking about Twitch and stuff. Uh, where can everybody find you right now? You're on the socials besides Twitch and stuff. Where can yeah. everybody find you? Well, first and foremost, thank you for having me on the show. Love the work you're doing. And just thank you so much. I thank appreciate you. you reaching out. Then where you can find me is, uh, so basically all socials, Dad Bob Plays. And then also check out my podcast, Dad's Beards Nerds. If you type that into all socials, you'll find it. And we're also on all podcast services. Thanks to a wonderful site called Anchor. Yeah, That's where we, uh, that's where we distribute our podcast. An Listen, Anchor's like dope. real fast. Yeah, if you're going to start a podcast, Anchor is the way to go because they will distribute it on like 13 or 14 podcast services and you don't have to worry about yourself. You don't have to worry about all, all the logistics and they give you all your stats there. So uh, once again, uh, Twitter, all socials, Dad Bob Plays, and check out my podcast, Dad's Beards Nerds. That's awesome. There'll be links down below in the description box so you guys go check it out. Send them some owl hugs. You know, give them a listen on their podcast and all different listening platforms and such. But anyway, thanks again, Anthony, <clears> for chatting up with me. Guys, let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And don't forget that right after this, now, me and Anthony are going to talk more on EX Mode, which is my Patreon exclusive show. For the dollar level or higher, you could join up on Patreon. You get all this exclusive content including the bonus episode we're going to do right after this where we're going to talk about a bunch of fun stuff which you guys are not going to want to miss so highly recommend that you guys join up with the patreon go check it out and check out all the other episodes i got on there so anyway from the two of us here we will talk to you again very soon peace out and stay epic everybody Bye.